So when they come on the vacation, they don't want to come and don't enjoy themselves. So Margaretha Village is always a name going to be ringing all over the world. And it's a good place to be. Jamaica, our island home, is a land of contrast, and that certainly shows in the two feature stories coming right up. No visit to Jamaica's north coast is complete for foreign visitors without a stop at this lively establishment. Back on our great Jamaican eating tour trip to Robins Bay, we experience another side of island life at Greencastle Estate where fauna and flora meet food in the most relaxing, delicious atmosphere. We'll be taking tea, but there's also an incredible dessert to learn featuring guava, plus traditional curry chicken and homemade roti. We'll be using our best dressed chicken mix parts for this great house feast in part two of our story. It's time for the Caribbean cooking show with international flavor, Vibes Cuisine. The king of Montego Bay's hip strip and a must stop for most cruise ship visitors is Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville. Vibes Cuisine checked in to learn some of the trade secrets that have contributed to its success. We have a slogan that says, um, wet by day, wild by night. Oh uh, as you can see behind me, uh, some of our patrons might be able to see the beginning of a 110 foot water slide mm -hmm. that goes directly into the Caribbean Sea. Not many people able to, uh, to rival that sort of uh, a visual and, and that sort of wet fun. We get the history behind musician Jimmy Buffett and his restaurant chain. Bill, what came first, the song or the restaurant? The song definitely <laughs> came first. <laughs> We're talking about uh, Jimmy Buffett uh, with a hit back in 1978. Mm -hmm. As you know, he comes from um, a sort of that uh, laid back hippie era. If it hadn't have been for a friend and confident, uh, confidant rather of his, Sunshine Smith, mm -hmm. uh, once he made the song, they were hanging out in Key West, and she said, why don't you, um, you know, put some of these neat uh, phrases and words you got out of your songs on t-shirts? So um, he did that, and he didn't believe at that time that that had any um, validity to it in terms of nobody's going to buy a t-shirt with cheeseburger in paradise on it. Well, of course he was wrong. She ended up being right. So that caused uh, just uh, an explosion of all of the other Margaritavilles. Uh, these were actually in Jamaica were joined into the marriage. Uh, uh, originally through sort of a contentious relationship. It used to be spelled differently here. And uh, Jimmy got involved and after some negotiations, uh, the locations here became a part of the official Margaritaville family in 2001. We're gonna go around here, we're gonna do some cooking. That's Andre flicking the burger there. Yeah. I think you wanna cook it maybe a midway for you guys. <laughs> then you have Marlon tossing his wings right there. The, the Margaritaville we, we standardize all the recipes now. So we, if you come here and you get a, a burger and you go to Ochi, you're gonna be the same. So it's like, we don't try to change it. It's everywhere you go, it's the same experience. That's, that's our mise en place fridge. Each component, we have a guacamole, we have a sour cream. Look at that. We're gonna start blooming flame, look at it. Yeah, that's hot. <laughs> I know those, those flavors actually get you, yeah. That's a curry crazy with some white rice, mixed vegetable. The multi-levels at this sports bar slash restaurant slash club offer some of the best views to watch a Jamaican sunset. We're strategically right in the path of, of where that sun lies, you know. So outside of being at Rick's Cafe in the grill, this is uh, also a pretty premium location to watch that sunset. Uh, but during the day is really... That uh, squeal we heard was, by the way, somebody going down <laughs> <laughs> the slide. <laughs> I, mean, during, I need to qualify that. During the day, uh, you're going to hear all of the best Buffett songs. We play Radio Margaritaville during the day. Mm -hmm. We have catamarans that come by a couple of times and then uh, we sort of ramp up the action a little bit. Um, and then as we get into the nighttime, uh, 6 to, uh, I'll say, 10 o'clock, 
much more mellow, low profile sort of Margaritaville dining environment. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it really kicks off into more of a club environment after 10 o'clock, yeah. which uh, some of our, our, our patrons from North America may not be familiar with Jimmy allowing this to be a club. Yeah. But at night, we turn it into Clubville. Clubville? Uh, yeah, yep. it, it, uh, it really takes uh, another move uh, into another direction. And then it's, a, it's a probably, uh, in fact, not probably, the number one nightclub. Uh, in this area as well. Cook for eight to ten minutes, and that's fish. It's pretty bomb to hit it. I think chef is out some onion rings on it, and then we're sweet. And also remember, over there, you're having this chicken fighter. The cooking is in heart and the plate is a framework. So for me, cooking every day, it's phenomenal. And um, I have my exec sous chef, her name is Marcia, we, which we worked together for a couple of years, and um, we, t we sit and we design dishes and all, men menus, so it's great. We also have our trainer, Marlon Forskin, who is heading away, making a taco, he's over there, she, we add our stuff to her, and then Marlon is gonna plate it, pile it up right there. I'm gonna add a piece of lemon or lime. I'm gonna prepare our battered onion rings there which are a Cajun remoulade, and we're going to do our bob, which we talk about, which we're going to cook it to your guys' temperature. We're going to do our fish and chips, which is tempura, which is a Japanese type of cuisine, because it's deep fried in batter. And we're going to look about our conch fritters, which we make from scratch now. So conch is in season now, so we do fresh conch in batter, and we put some little scotch bonnet peppers, different type of thing, roasted bell peppers, and it's going to be fun. So we're going, I'm looking forward for that. Whether you want a frozen cocktail or fun fast food, Margaritaville delivers. My cheeseburger in paradise and a whole lot more from Margaritaville in Montego Bay. When Vibes returns, it's time for a slower pace with a little spice. This little piggy retired with Scotia Bridge. This little piggy did not. Not. Start your Scotia Bridge retirement plan today. Contact Scotia Insurance. Now, more than ever, you can't afford to waste money. You have to make sure you get the best value for your money. With Best Dressed Chicken, one chicken goes a long way. Pound for pound, it's the best you can buy. Best Dressed Chicken, a Jamaican tradition of quality. But you don't work here. Greencastle Estate in St. Mary serves up incredible scenery, and a variety of activities based on the property's heritage. Green Castle is a 1,600-acre eco-resort located in Robbins Bay. We're an hour from major cities such as Kingston, Ocherius, and Port Antonio. Very easy drive to get over here. Um, we are an eco-resort. We also do some form of agriculture on the property. We have partnered with some local, local leases in our community. So we have an apiary where we produce honey. We also have a coconut oil production facility and a commercial orchid operation. And also on the property, Eastern Livestock, who has different types of cattle. There are lots of things to do and see on Greencastle. You come into the Welcome Center and of course we give you a nice fresh fruit juice, whatever juice is in season, or good old coconut water, which we just picked from the trees right here. Um, our tour guide gives you a little bit of a synopsis of the history of Greencastle. Then you're taken to the coconut oil production facility, where we show you how they make co coconut oil in cold pressed form. From there, we go to the commercial orchid, um, commercial orchid operation, a tour of the windmill tower, Jack's Bay Beach, 
and of course our own blue hole which has a lot of coral and marine life and we try to keep it as natural we allow no fishing in the area that's good and of course if there is time and guests want to see the Taino Indian burial site we can take them there as well it's a little walk about a mile walk off of the main road to get there and of course our estate house as long as we don't have guests in house, we will show it to our guests so they can see what the gardens look like. The Great House has comfortable accommodations. The estate house was built in the 1950s. It was actually the private residence of the owner at the time, Macmillan, and this was where he used to vacation whenever he came to Jamaica. Um, we have now put it into a rental program. We want to share this experience with people. So we have opened up the Great House as a rental program. So we have a three bedroom house, which accommodates six to eight people. However, we have a fourth bedroom, which we call the overflow room because it doesn't have a, as awesome a view as the other three bedrooms, which opens onto the veranda and it overlooks the Blue Mountains and the Caribbean Sea. Part of the pleasure of staying in or using the great house for a function is the property's cook, Stacy, and her great cooking. Of course, part of Vibe's visit included cooking up our best dressed chicken mix parts in an incredible curry with homemade roti and even dessert. We have the newer villa, which is a three bedroom villa. It's very, it's a cozy, very cozy um, and very intimate. It has a gazebo also overlooking the Caribbean Sea and Port um, Anata Bay. And it has a mini zip line running across the lawn. So we find that whenever kids come here, even if they're staying at the estate house, they want to come down to New Village just to go on the zip line. Sue Crum Ewing and her family have lived in this charming cottage for several generations. Susan, we're here at this beautiful property on this lovely morning and we're going to have tea shortly. I want you to tell us a little bit about what your day is like here. Well, we get up in the morning and we come out on the veranda, first of all, because it's so beautiful out here. No matter what your day is like, you feel good. Just a cup of coffee in your hand and you're ready for your day. And we get up early because we're farmers, so we're up by 6 o'clock, which is the best time of the day. Great. Tell us a little bit about the history of the property. Greencastle Estate has been around a long time. It belonged to one of the first civil, it, the first civil governor of Jamaica, and he gave it to his nephew, and he named the two properties Greencastle and Newry after towns in England where he came from. So that's where the name of Greencastle Estate came from, and then it belonged to a series of people after that and it was always a mixed estate. They had cane at one time, they had bananas at one time, they've always had cattle and pimento and cocoa. So it's really a mixed farm and it has just been bought now by a developer and he is going to put in small amount of development, it's going to be a green development and only 300 acres out of the 1600 acres are being used for the development and the rest of it he's going to keep as a farm so that the people who live here can walk on the estate, walk the trails, go to the waterfall and enjoy nature as well as having a house here. What else can visitors experience when they come to the estate? Well, Greencastle Estate, a lot of the visitors we have, especially in the winter months, are birders because we have 125 bird species that actually have been identified on Greencastle Estate. And the property is very diverse. You have the lower areas which have the ponds, so that's a different area for the birds. Then you have the higher areas in the hills where you get a different set of birds again. And then you have the pasture areas, the open areas where it's a new a different set of birds as well. So visitors really come and walk with their cameras and they can see all these different varieties of birds. There are 29 species that are endemic species to Jamaica of birds and 18 of them can be found on Greencastle Estate. So our visitors are really interested in those even though we have a lot of winter visitors at birds from the states. 
but they want to see the endemic Jamaica birds because they've never seen those before. And we can actually see 18 of them, 18 varieties on Greencastle Estate. There is so much to see here at on Green Castle. So we invite people to come in for either for a day tour, you can come in and have a picnic, even for a wedding. You want to get married, there are ideal locations on this property for weddings. Um, you need a weekend, you need to get away, you need to de-stress, rejuvenate. This is the place to come. When we return, it's time for arts and craft and a scrumptious afternoon tea. This little piggy retired with Scotia Bridge. This little piggy did not. Not. Start your Scotia Bridge retirement plan today. Contact Scotia Insurance. Now, more than ever, you can't afford to waste money. You have to make sure you get the best value for your money. With Best Dressed Chicken, one chicken goes a long way. Pound for pound, it's the best you can buy. Best Dressed Chicken, a Jamaican tradition of quality. But you don't work here. We want to keep it the way it is. We don't want to change anything too much. We don't want another Negril. You know, we want to keep this as close to nature as possible. And people are looking for that. People want to find, you know, unique places like this, very peaceful um, and very natural. The gorgeous gardens are an idyllic setting for granddaughter Amy and her own little house, showcasing grandma's artistic abilities. The house next door to the estate house is the Crum Cottage that was built in the, in the, in the 1920s. And Sue Crum Ewing has lived on this estate for over 40 years. She offers a tea and garden tour. She's really awesome with flowers. A lot of the flowers that are planted at the estate house, she, had, she planted them herself. So she tells people about all the different types of plants on the property. And while they sip, sit and have sip tea. <laughs> our a section of our garden that our visitors are particularly fond of because we have the torch lilies here and we also have the heliconias, the crab claw heliconias and we try and grow a lot of stuff in the garden that the hummingbirds like because they're around a lot and they seem to get water out of the flowers both of the heliconia and of the torch lily. Are these hard to grow? They're not very hard to go, but they like a lot of water. So the slow pear gives them water that, that they wouldn't get in the rest of the garden. Both my husband and I are gardeners and that is our hobby. So when we come home from work in the evening or our husband comes home from work, then we go out in the garden. And we've tried to make this like uh, almost like an English garden so that we have a mass of different flowers. My husband loves orchids, so we do use a lot of orchids, but we want to have heliconias, gingers, the Jamaican flowers. And it's also an organic garden, so we don't grow anything that you have to fertilize or you have to spray. The tree above us is a Queen Laga Stramere, and it's a beautiful oh. flowering tree. It has purple flowers and it flowers in about May. It's also related to our June roses that everybody knows. So it also has a lot of perches for the hummingbirds when they're feeding on the veranda. They stay in this big tree and then they go across to the veranda. Time for the Vibes Cuisine Scotia Criticare Healthy Living Tip. Gardening benefits your mind, spirit and body. Research is showing that gardening for just 30 minutes daily will help. Increase flexibility, strengthen joints, decrease blood pressure and cholesterol levels, lower your risk for diabetes, slow osteoporosis, not to mention the aesthetic benefits of your lovely plants. Now that with like urban sprawl and people moving to Kingston or moving to Montego Bay, the big cities, a lot of people don't really know about gardening. What would you say to young people who, you know, 
who sh want to get into gardening or who should get into gardening? Well, I think a lot of the young people now are watching the wellness programs mm -hmm. and gardening is a thing of the spirit as well as I know it's it's hard to weed and do all those kind of things, you know, um, but it's so rewarding when you plant seeds and you see them come up and flower and are beautiful. I mean, and then you never know what you're going to get. So that is very, very rewarding. And then you plant a tree and you know you're, you're helping the environment, you know, that as well. So it's very rewarding in that way you're making God's earth more beautiful. So Susan, we are sitting at your beautiful tea table and I have to tell you it looks so delicious and I'm so excited. Um, would you please pour me some tea? Sure. We're going to have just ordinary tea today, but we do serve peppermint tea from the garden as well, fresh peppermint tea. Nice. All right, and I'll just pour myself a cup as we're going to have and tea And I will together. let you have a cup of tea. <laughs> Your china is beautiful. This would I be such a nice thing for young girls to come and spend the afternoon. And well, yes. young, no, I, I, I don't want to discriminate, young children. It's no, fun I'm because I collect cups as a hobby, so I've got cups from people who brought me cups from all over the world. Oh, they're so you beautiful. may be drinking a cup from China or England or Canada. Very nice. The house was built in the 1920s and we really don't know what it looked like then. It has had a lot of additions and I guess we have put in modern bathrooms and modern kitchen. But this main structure and the floors, the mahogany floors, they are probably about two foot wide in some areas. Yeah. Those trees don't even exist anymore. talk a little bit about your tea experience. Um, if people come to Greencastle, it's not a very, it's not a hard drive. It's, it could be a day trip. They can just call. What can they expect when they come? Right. Well, most people come from the little small hotel, which is down on the sea from Strawberry Fields. And they come at about four o'clock in the afternoon. Many of them are visitors from abroad. And it's a fascinating experience for me because we've had visitors from all over the world. I had just had a couple from Iceland the other day. I've never met anybody from Iceland before. And they um, come in at about four and I take them around the garden, show them the Jamaican plants, and I'll tell them the Jamaican names because often they grow them in pots in their country, but they call it something different. So they're interested in Jamaican names. So we wander around the garden, maybe for an hour, an hour and a half. I show them that and then we come in and sit on the veranda. And of course, they're met by the hummingbirds. <laughs> so they really enjoy that, seeing hummingbirds close up. And then we have tea. And I have several different kinds of tea. I'll have hot tea, I'll have ice sun tea, which you make out in the sun, you know, in a jug. And then I'll have peppermint tea, fresh peppermint tea from the garden. Then we'll have different kinds of sandwiches, pastries. I try and do Jamaican things like gizadas and planting tarts. And we'll have our main thing, which is the cake. The tea allows sampling of Sue and daughter Anne's edible arts. Now this is your pepper jelly That's that right. has homemade pepper jelly and it has no preservatives in it and it's made with a little bit of scotch bonnet, mm -hmm. not too much because you just want it to have a little bit of bite and it has sweet peppers and a little bit of pectin and sugar in it. Mm. And it's very good as a snack eaten over cream cheese. Or That's you can you have it, it on a chicken sandwich as well, which is very, very good. That's very, very nice. Just tell us how right. you got into that. Well, I got into that because a friend of mine in Kingston had pepper jelly was made by an old lady in Kingston and always made it for her family. And then she said, I'm too old for this now. I can't do it anymore. So the friend in Kingston said, why don't you make it for me? <laughs> so she gave me the recipe and that's how we started. And then we have wild guavas on the farm. So then we started with the guava jelly and we also have our own several oranges. So we went to marmalade. Uh, marmalade as well. Very nice. So people can get your pepper jelly where? 
Right, they can get it, order it from us. Mm -hmm. We have a, a telephone number and a web, uh, website and email, so they can order it like that. Okay. But I actually don't sell it at any shop. Okay, but they can always come here for tea. They can always come here for tea. Stockpile it and bring it home right. like how we're that, going to do that's it. That's our main sale, and we do sell to in a small amount to the hotels okay. for baskets. Sue's crafts are just wonderful and very creative in how they use natural materials. Well, um, here again, a friend got me into that because she said, oh, you can paint very well. And I'm like, not really. I just do it just for fun. So I decided that um, if I was going to do it properly, I needed to have some art le lessons. So I found a lady called Anne-Marie Hendricks in Kingston who taught for years at Immaculate and as art teacher. And she helped me with all the techniques. So then I said, what, what should I paint? What, what can we go into? And she said, oh, what about birdhouses? Nobody makes birdhouses. So we also have the packy trees on the estate. So then I um, decided I'll try birdhouses and that's how it started. And then I said, well, what other natural resource do we have on the estate that you don't have to buy to make stuff with? And we have a beach that has the most beautiful rocks every kind of stone, every color. So then I started painting on rocks and I paint birds and I paint flowers on the rocks. And we also make what I call pot decorators, which are little bamboo sticks and then they have painted rocks on the top and you just stick them in your flower pots to decorate the flower pots. Nice. So we do all different things like that. The Greencastle Estate property is just an hour from Kingston and a drive out for meditative vistas and tea makes a wonderful day trip. And then, of course, my favorite, <laughs> the chocolate cake. Now, you do this, you make everything for the teas? Everything is made fresh from the teas, and I make the cakes the same day that we eat them. I usually make scones because it's kind of like an English tea, and then we have our own um, guava jelly that goes with the scones and cream cheese sometimes. Okay, as well. well, I'm chomping at the bit to cut into this cake. Yes, go ahead and try it. Thank you so much. Can you pass me a plate, please? Right here. And I will serve you first. And here's your napkin. Thank you so much. Oh, it's so moist and nice. It's nice and buttery. I think I need a little fork to help myself. I hope you will. Take it out. Oh, Let's wow. Let's put the plate right here and then you can get to it. Well, easier. the first piece that comes out never comes out Perfect. beautiful when you cut, but guess what? It's <laughs> Susan, this is your piece, and I will cut myself a very nice big piece. Okay. If I could please trouble you for another plate. It's right here. And. All right, maybe oh. it's easier to get out the second piece. It always is. Look at that. There we go. Okay, I'll let you try it first, so that I can get your, My reaction? your reaction. <gasps> okay. Oh, Susan. <laughs> this is so delicious. The icing, it just melts. Oh, it just, it just melts. This is my son's favorite, so I had to make it for his birthday. So yeah. you're getting a pre-birthday -birth taste of cake. I know, I feel bad that I cut his cake, and I said that I would sing him happy birthday, but... He won't mind at all. Okay. <laughs> oh, the cake is so good. Not bad at all. I'm definitely coming back. And that's cake. great. Oh, it's and so nice. When you call me for a tea party, you can say, Well, I hate chocolate cake. I don't want it. I want orange cake or I want fruit cake. You can, can I tell vote? Me what cake. You can vote what kind of No, one. can I have both? Oh, yes, you probably <laughs> can have both. <laughs> mm. Susan, delicious. Great. How about that? We've spoiled our appetite with Sue's delectable chocolate cake. Stacy still has her curry chicken to showcase, so please join us next time. For more from Vibes Cuisine's Great Jamaican Eating Tour at Greencastle Estate, Robins Bay, St. Mary. Is that good? Please join our fan page at Vibes Cuisine TV or follow Vibes Cuisine, one word, on Twitter. Vibe stays fit with Gymkhana. Vibes Cuisine, brought to you by Scotia Criticare, your health can become critical in a heartbeat, and the best dressed chicken, one of the fine products from the Jamaica Broilers Group.